This is Beach Talk Radio. Good morning, Mr. and Mrs. America and all ships at sea. This is your captain speaking, Mean Gene. Mean Gene. The following will be a test of the ship's whistle, the sonar alarm, the cable alarm, and the atomic attack alarm. On the beautiful island of Sanibel, you're listening to Beach Talk Radio with Kim and Ed Ryan. And hello, everyone, and welcome to Beach Talk Radio. This is episode number four of the Sanibel Show, live from the community house. A big thank you to Teresa for coming in today just to open up for us and our guests, and we'll be talking to her later on in the show. Also, thank you to Brian at the Dunes Golf and Tennis Club last week for hosting us, and next week we'll be at the Lighthouse Cafe. Please share this page with your friends and family and subscribe to our YouTube page. We broadcast the show live on Facebook and YouTube, and then it gets uploaded as a podcast, so you can listen to it anytime you'd like on any device that you listen to your favorite podcast. Sanibel residents have a big election coming up March 2nd with three seats open. You have six candidates to choose from. We'll have 30 minute interviews with our two candidates today. And first, we want to welcome John Henshaw. John, thanks so much for coming in. I'm sure you're uh, getting a little tired of the campaigning. Uh, campaigning is uh, is tiring, but and I've never done this before, but but it's, it will come to an end. Uh-huh. So first, we want to explain we are six feet apart. Uh, so we're socially distancing here at the community house and there's nobody else in the building. So uh, uh, I know you wanted to make sure that we were following the rules. Yes. Thank you. So I, you mentioned that you have never done this before. So why why enter into this fray now? Well, I've never run for a, office. A, an mm-hmm. office like this before. Now, I have uh, been appointed. Uh, offices, but not uh, not where you have to go out and campaign, put your picture up in the newspaper, which I don't like. I, <laughs> I always thought that your picture was in the newspaper. That's not a good thing. Right. So, uh, it depends on what page of the newspaper <laughs> it appears well, that's on. That's probably true. I, I joke my my picture's in the post office, too. But That's, uh, <laughs> that's not a that's good not joke. A good <laughs> so tell us a little bit about your history. You said you've been living here for 28 years? Uh, about 22, 22, 22 uh, on and off. Now, I came here permanently after I left my job in, uh, in D.C. in 2004. Uh, I decided to set up a, a consulting business here uh, in January 2005, and I've been here working on the island since. Okay, so tell us about the history of your employment. What, what did you do before coming down here? Um, I graduated uh, with a master's of public health degree from University of Michigan in 74 and then immediately went to work in St. Louis uh, for a chemical company. And I did that uh, for two or three other companies, which were spinoffs of the original, uh, until I got appointed by George W. Bush to run OSHA. Okay, so the chemical company was Monsanto? Uh, Correct. So uh, how was it working for a company like that that always seems to get kicked around these days? Well, it, it, we weren't get, get kicked around much uh, back in those days. Um, we were starting, at least I felt like I was starting on the environmental safety and health side, uh, trying to improve worker health and safety and environmental conditions. Uh, and they were receptive to that. It, but I was a staff person. And that means you've got to push programs, you've got to push ideas. Sometimes the ideas don't resonate very well with some of the senior people. And I got in trouble a couple of times. And I told my boss, well, I was looking for a job before I found this one. So if you want me to go, I'll go. Mm-hmm. But this is what we got to do. Uh, and so um, I was successful and no one called me out on that uh, or told me to leave. Uh, and so eventually we made some progress, progress in improving uh, environmental health and safety throughout the company. So I'm proud of that work. I wasn't in marketing. I wasn't developing products. Uh, I was really around safety and health and the environment. So do you think people should use Roundup to kill their weeds? It's an effective herbicide. I mean, it, and it does break down uh, with, to, to fertilize the, the crop. So from that standpoint, it's effective. Now, if it's misused, that's wrong. And I think some of the arguments that you hear today is because they're misused. And anytime you misuse a product, uh, shame on us. 
How do you misuse it? Is it uh, overuse? Is that is that? Well, it's, it's overuse or using in situations where you could have a significant runoff. Okay. Uh, and pollute another body of water or pollute another area. Now, what do you think about? I know there's fertilizer ordinances on Sanibel. Do those need to be changed? Tightened. What, what What is your viewpoint on that? Uh, absolutely. Certainly on a barrier island like this, um, it, as you know, when it rains, it rains. And that everything flushes down into the into the waterways. Uh, and that's that's nutrient material for the Corinda Brevis, which is the red tide. Or if you go up the watershed, that's certainly for for the um, for the various kinds of issues we have throughout the watershed. So the blue green algae and the Okeechobee all the way down. And there's other species we have to worry about too that are hazardous and we don't want them in our water, water systems. So anyone just tuning us is John Henshaw is running for city council. He's a candidate for council. That's who we're interviewing today from the community house uh, on Sanibel. And if you had uh, one criticism of the council now, what would it be? Well, I, I think the council has done a great job. Um, I think what they've done in respect to COVID <clears throat> is right on. The mask requirements, I think, are right on. I think the fiscal responsibility that the council has exercised over the years is right on. And I want to continue that. The only thing I would, I would tweak maybe is our communications around COVID, for example. Um, just putting a sign up here and there about mask mandates or requiring masks without really talking about why, uh, where can you wear it? You don't need to wear it on the shared use path. You need to wear it if you're within six feet or maybe 10 feet of, of people. Um, and where you're doing a lot of either talking or as I mentioned to you earlier, we're generating aerosols when we're talking, when we vibrate our vocal cords, we're expelling aerosols. Um, and we, we don't know in respect to the SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19, uh, what is that dose that's sufficient to cause somebody to get ill? And it probably is different from individual to individual, but I think if we had more communications from, uh, from the city, what does it mean to have 100 cases? Does that mean it's bad? Mm -hmm. we're, we're not. We're not discussing that. We just say there's 100 cases, um, and what's it relevant to? What's the denominator, numerator, and denominator? You got to have both to come up with a rate. And are we good compared to someplace else? I would say we're much better than a lot of other places in Florida, and certainly other places around the country. So, who should be getting the word out, and how? Well, it's difficult. We're relying on the state. Uh, health department to make most of those communications. Um, and it, it takes some skill to do that. We need some expertise on how to craft the message, not only to why we're wearing masks or why we should be wearing masks, but what does the numbers mean? Uh, should I be scared because now the number is 100, 150, or now 200? What does that mean relative to the rest of the world in respect to COVID uh, disease? So. I think we it would be great if we had a little more communication as to what all this means. Because the key, I think, is we've got to be safe, and that's the mask. But we also have to feel safe. And if we don't feel safe, we're not going to be happy campers. We're not going to attract people to come to this island. So I think you need both components. You've got to be safe, and that's, that's – um, your, your definition of safe and my definition of safe are different. We have to recognize mm -hmm. that. But then we also have to feel safe, and that requires some communication. So, John, do you think it, you're – are you saying the city manager should uh, get more information out? The mayor should get more information out? Should it be videos, emails? How? Well, it, it could be a combination of all of that. Now, we, we, don't, we don't have the wherewithal to do that. Um, we don't have the expertise uh, – basically in, in, in city hall to do that. So it would require getting expertise to, to make the communications. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a minor thing. If, if I were on city council, I would push to get better communications. And it probably means getting some expertise. Who, people like yourselves who know how to communicate, what words to use, 
Mm-hmm. You give us because, way too much credit. Go ahead. Well, but it but it takes people who can who can speak the language that people want to hear, and it'll resonate with them. I, I'm a scientist, and the words I use may not mm-hmm. resonate uh, with uh, with the average public. So lastly on this, and I'll let you ask a question well, or two okay. today, dear. <laughs> Should people, uh, do people have to wear them outside? No. Um, if you're socially distanced, and I mentioned this earlier, it's really physical distance. It's not social distance. Right. Yes. But we got to maintain the proper physical distance. Now, if I'm coughing and sneezing, you may want to go more than six feet. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if I'm just talking, those aerosols, they're, e- even though they're small diameter uh, uh, liquid aerosols, um, they're not going to, they're going to get trapped into the air currents. So when you're outside, they're going to blow off somewhere. Um, if you're inside with, uh, uh, the community house has done a good job on ventilation. Ventilation is the key indoors. I was recommending to, uh, restaurants that the restaurant tables themselves where people sit and talk across from each other, they ought to be down draft tables. If you know what a downdraft table no. is, no. you have holes on the table and air is pushed in. It's sucked down to the table. So when you when you talk, it you're goes, emitting and it goes straight down before it gets to the other person. Is there, there something under, so a fan or a vent or what's sucking you would it need, down? You would need a, a different exhaust system. Okay. You would need, and, and that's that's costly to put in that kind of exhaust system. But air changes in a room, that's why it's okay to be outside because there's typically a significant air change, certainly on Santa Belt, typically. Right. Uh, so you've got a breeze. It's moving those aerosols. They dry out reasonably fast. They dehydrate, basically. They dry out. Um, and so they're being pushed off somewhere else. It, it, it's all a degree of risk. There's nothing absolute in any of this, and that's what people have to realize. There's nothing absolute here. I want to minimize the risk, so I'm going to wear the mask when I'm in, in close proximity to people. You, oh, Sorry, dear, but you've gotten the vaccine already, and you still wear the mask. Why explain that? Well, the, the data is not all out yet as to how safe it is for me. Um, I think I'm pretty good. If I, I had the Pfizer, uh, both shots, so I'm like a new puppy. I've got my shots. Um, but I am... Um, I, I, we don't know for sure. Even a 94% uh, efficacy is, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Der- uh, Moderna is about the same. Um, I'm still going to wear it because I want somebody that I'm speaking to to feel safe. Got you. Not just be safe. And I wear an N95, and I've been wearing N95 since ni- in the 1970s. Uh, in industry, we wear N95s. I had plenty of these. If you need some, let me know. Because <laughs> <All right. laughs> they protect you as well as somebody else. Uh, and I choose to do that. I, I choose to not be a victim. I choose to be to protect myself. Now, you talked, uh, we were just talking about the vaccine. How do you feel like the rollout's going? How's it going on Sanibel? Are people getting, you know, the people that need it getting it? What is your What are your thoughts I, on I that? Think uh, obviously, we've never done this before as a country or as a state. I think the state is doing a, a great job. Lee County is doing a great job. Recognizing we've never done this before and we're going to learn. And, and there will be a lot of naysayers or people out there say, well, we should have done this way, that way. Well, hindsight, hindsight is, is, is 2020. Right. Um, but I think they're doing a remarkable job. I think the city... Obviously, we have to be dependent on the state and the county. Uh, and uh, at some point, we will have the opportunity to have uh, a distribution, vaccine distribution here. Um, but it's it's too early for that, I think. I, I think if, I'm not the expert in the distribution of vaccines. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a lot of good people who are, and they've chosen to do what they're doing. And I think it's a great job. Great. Uh, I want to read from the Sanibel Captiva Island Reporter. You said um, that you have the e- education and experience to tackle the issues threatening Sanibel and find solutions. W- what are the issues, top issues you think that are threatening Sanibel? Well, I think um, aside from the COVID issue, right, which, right, which I think we're going to get adjusted to this. Uh, and hopefully it will, it'll calm down to some extent. We'll be more accustomed to it. 
this is not the first pandemic we'll have. There'll be, there'll be others. This is the second SARS. There's, there's seven different uh, coronaviruses out there. This is the second SARS. So there'll be another, and there'll be variants of the SARS-CoV-2. But so put that aside. The other issue that, that which really caused me to say, I got to do something. Okay, here we go. Uh, is, is water quality. In 2018, I was here, and I was doing my thing as a consultant, very busy, and, and was fine. But then we had this disaster, basically, environmental disaster uh, on our island. Uh, and um, we have to do something about it. We had, we had the Everglades plan, 20 years, nothing's being done. Nothing was being done, or very little. And... Thank God that the governor has now signed the executive order 1912 with 29 projects. Um, and we're getting funding for those. We need to get more funding for those to begin to work on water quality. Now, I also believe we, we've got to do it ourselves first, lead by example. So that means this island, we've got to shore up our septic. We got 19 septic tanks still out there in, in use. We've got to get those out of use and get people on the central sewer system. We got to improve the sewer itself, or the system itself. We've got a phase four project, uh, which will make the water even cleaner. In the um, when I started in the 70s, it was referred to the solution to pollution is dilution. Right. And and when we only had a few people on the earth, yeah, that. The, the nature accommodates. That's why wild bears can do whatever they want, but there's only a few of them. Right. Now, when you get millions of people, or now we got seven and a half billion people on the earth, we're going to generate waste and we got to handle them properly and get better and better and better and better. So waste treatment obviously improved that here. The runoff that we have uh, for the Sanibel Slough, we need to work on that um, it, to, to clean that, that system up. We also have to, hopefully, it, it working with Captiva and Lee County, getting them on the central sewer system. Because we know septic tanks don't work. I, I used to do that in the 70s, test septic tanks uh, for the state of Delaware. That's where I worked for the state. And I had people come up and say, my septic tank is fine. So why is that? I've never had to clean it out. Oh. Nothing, you know, I, it's working fine. Well, yeah, you don't have to clean it out because it's all being dumped it's, straight into wherever. So just to back up for a second, John, you mentioned the disaster, but you didn't say what it was. You're referring to the red tide, correct? Uh, red tide. Okay. Uh, and the blue-green algae. Right. Oh, all uh, of that was Cape a mess. Coral, right. That was a disaster for them. Yeah. The and then fish kill here was a disaster. Oh, yeah. And the 19 septic tanks, the council, I believe, is working on getting those changed now, right, or removed? They are. Right. Are they yeah. moving fast enough? Or? Well, it's going to be dependent on phase four. If, if we get that funded and it, it's now um, up in Tallahassee, it's on the consent agenda, I understand, the 750000 to supplement our uh, money that we're putting into it as well, Lee County. And um, so I think hopefully that'll happen and then we can start talking about getting captive. What is the total cost to the uh, the... Uh, I, I don't okay. recall precisely the total cost. And is that in the budget now for Sanibel? It's in the budget. Okay. Yes. Right. Thinking about budgets and the impact that the pandemic's going to have on, on the budget, what are, and, and there's so many projects that pull on the purse strings of that budget. What are the top projects you think need to be, to be looked at, to be considered for those funds that may be dwindling in, in light of the pandemic. Well, I, and I think the council has done a great job on managing this issue, this pandemic, and how to streamline our, our management of, of our programs. We had to furlough people. We had to lay people off. Uh, that's a hard decision to make, but it was wisely done. And, and I'm, I'm a fiscal conservative, which okay. means I don't want to spend anybody's money unless we have it and they want it to be spent that way. Sure. So uh, we have to be very careful in how we spend it. So I think that the council has done a great job in managing the, the resources that we have coming in. Um, the, the issues about the beach parking and closing down the beaches, all of those were heavily debated, as you probably know. 
um, as well as in Fort Myers Beach and all over Southwest Florida. Um, and so there was some loss, and there will be some loss. We've got to accommodate that, but we can't, we can't spend above our means. We've got to encourage businesses uh, to figure out how to, how to bring people back on the island. I think 2018, we're still reverberating from that mm -hmm. as far as the water quality. And certainly we had a red tide a few weeks ago. Little taste we still of got it. a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And people were concerned, are we back into that same pattern in 2018? So you, you mentioned you're a fiscal conservative. The council recently uh, more than doubled the fee for parking for people coming from, uh, from outside residents. Uh, would you have voted yes for that? Uh, I would, based on what I understand the studies tell us. And who comes to the island, how often they come to the island, and how can they what kind of value do they receive from that, from that pass? And it's still worth it. Now, it's based on how many times they come back and forth, how many times they come on the island, how, how many times do you use it? I, get, I have a transponder, and I calculate if I go off once a week, it's probably better for me to just pay as I go. Mm -hmm. If I go three or four times a week, then it's probably better to pay the one lump sum. So the same thing with the parking. Now, I've read the reports, and it makes sense for most people to come up back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It makes sense and still is of value to them to pay the higher price for the, for the sticker. So uh, when you go to the voting booth uh, with the most... All of them. <laughs> um, I, I think, don't know how you get away with that question. Go I, ahead. I think um, everybody that's running, I'm really impressed. I didn't know some of them before, uh, but as we have a chance to talk to candidates and answering questions, I think every single one of them are, are, are qualified people. And people who are concerned about Sanibel, concerned about the residents, concerned about safety and health and the environment. Um, Everybody has a little different twist to it, of course, um, but every one of them are, are, are good people. I thought you said you weren't a politician. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody that we've, I mean, everybody that we've spoken to has nothing but praise for the city manager. What are your thoughts? Yeah, Judy's done a great job. Uh, it, it, she's got a difficult job. I mean, it. it um, I wouldn't want to be in her shoes, frankly. Uh, but but she has managed the city and worked with the city council, who she reports to, on managing the city. She pushes back sometimes; they push back, and that's the way it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think um, I think by and large, she's done a, she's done a great job. Are you comfortable that the uh, that the mayor's position isn't elected? Yeah, I haven't really thought too much okay. uh, about the pros and cons of that. That's the way it's been. Mm -hmm. And I don't, as I sit here, I, I can't say that's good or bad. It is what it is. And I'm okay with that. But uh, I may change my tune if I get on the council and see things differently. But I don't have any uh, reservations about the way it's been done now. Who, who do you think should be the mayor uh, after the election? <laughs> The individual that gets the most votes okay. from city council. All right. T two for two he is. He's, he's, he's hitting right out of the park there. So what makes you stand out over the others? Well, um, one, I, I do come with a different kind of background. I'm not a CPA, and one of them is a CPA. I'm not a physician. Another one's a physician. Um, and, and, and there's two realtors, I believe, and one lawyer. I'm, I'm not of any of those, so I'm different. And so we're all somewhat different. I bring one is environmental safety and health background. So um, that's, that's unique. And right now we need somebody to, to make sure that we protect our environment, protect our habitats, protect our water, improve our water. The other piece of that is I have dealt with politicians. When I was in Washington, I had 535 bosses. That means every congressman and any, every senator felt like they could tell me what to do. I went into their office and say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And then I went back and did what I thought was right. And then I had to ask for forgiveness later, maybe, but mm -hmm. I'd rather have that. I'm not going to ask for permission sometime. But 
the point is, I, I deal with these people. I dealt with them. And they're, they're fine people, they, they, but they have a special interest. Everybody has a special interest. Uh, but what we have to do, I think, as city council is hear all those special interests, hear all the input, and then condense it down into something that's workable overall for the city. I think I, can, I have that ability. Uh, I've done that. And certainly my areas of specialization, like in environment and safety and health, I've designed waste treatment facilities, primary, secondary, and tertiary facilities. I've, I've dealt with communities around uh, uh, water issues, uh, such as septic tanks, and get them on board. My company was an ag company, and, and we get, I gave discussions and talks to farmers about how to retain your, your, uh, your runoff or stormwater. Um, and why? Because it's polluting the rivers. And then we're all getting blamed for it, right. um, the company as well as the, the farmers. So that's, that's, uh, that's my forte, I think, is dealing with people, relationships around environment, safety, and health, and recognizing that everybody has talent. We just have to pull that talent and bring it together and, and make things happen. When you talk to the residents and you're out having dinner and they see you and it's a small community, so I'm sure you know, all know a lot of people and know each other. What are their concerns? What's their number one concern or top two concerns, the residents? Well, besides, besides the, COVID. Besides COVID. And then water quality is still an issue, although we have to make sure that doesn't wane as as sun comes out. It's fine. Everything's fine. Right. Uh, it's not. Right. We got to keep pushing. We got to keep pushing that button. Uh, the other one is traffic. You haven't mentioned oh. that, but in every forum I've been in, somebody says, what are you going to do about traffic? Nothing. I don't know what to do about traffic. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you can widen the road. No. No, we're not going to do that. Right. As far as I'm concerned, we're not going to widen the road. We're not going to put four lanes in here. Um, now, the only thing we might do is encourage more people on bike paths, right. mm -hmm. widen the bike paths maybe. Mm -hmm but not the roads. So we got to find a way to get people on and the off the island differently, maybe using different means, maybe electric cars or maybe some sort of other kind of transport. It's been tried and we've got examples of where it works and doesn't work. Or as well as we've got to figure out how to spread the load. Instead of everybody here, February, March, and April, let's spread it out to June and July. They can stay in July. Yeah. Yeah, if you but, can turn down the heat, down I the, think we'll get some people down here. But it, but there's shoulder, there's some opportunities I think on shoulder seasons for us to have special events. Yeah, it's going to be hot. Yeah. But how many how many people turn down Orlando in July? Right. Not many. True. I mean, it's yeah. busy. Give them give them a reason to come. They'll come, right? That's the idea. So I I think. We need to explore some of those ideas. I think one of the things when I've talked to a few people is about land use and and balancing, preserving, you know, the the wildlife and, and those areas and, and increasing that and also kind of managing that with development that may or may not go on. Can you speak to like the Sanibel plan and the land use issues that are face the island? Well, the, yeah, I, I, I do think... Uh, the Sanibel plan and the development code, the codes that we have, they're excellent. Now there's some tweaking to be done. We've got to we've got to improve the uh, the the um, franchise one. We've got to improve the uh, septic system uh, uh, issues. So there's there's some improvements. What do you mean franchise one? Oh, uh, there's issues around uh, what constitutes a franchise. Okay. It's either advertising or logos, or is it formulas for certain kinds of food? Um, and so that's got to be that's got to be addressed. And right now, the the planning commission have got a group that are looking at that right now. Um, and so, but those are small tweaks. But the fundamental of the Santa Bell plan. Uh, Protecting the habitat, habitat, habitat. The uh, sixty-seven percent of our mm -hmm. island is in conservation. Mm. Uh, that's great. Can we get more? And maybe we can. Um, and, and you'd it, be in support of that, looking for I, additional. I would be in support mm -hmm. of that. Okay. Um, and 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 the reason is, and it's very simple. I just 
five o'clock, I took my three grandkids to the airport. Uh, they've been here a month and a half. Um, and they love Sanibel because they can ride their bike oh. anywhere. They saw just, a, I, I quizzed them as we were driving to the airport, how many animals do you see? And they, they started rattling off everything that they saw in their natural habitats. It wasn't a zoo in their natural habitats. Um, and that's what makes Sanibel unique. That's why the city needs to continue to partner, at which they are, obviously, with SCCF mm -hmm. and other partners around preserving the habitats, preserving uh, the environment here on Sanibel. The reason for that, I'm getting a long-winded answer, the reason for that is I want them to appreciate nature. I want them to appreciate wildlife. I want them to realize it's important that we take care of our environment. It's going to get more and more difficult. By 2050, we'll have 10 billion people on this earth. Where are we going to put them all? I hope we don't put them on our lands. Uh, certainly the habitats that are critical to certain species. I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a tree hugger. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I care about the environment. I care about animals. And I care about um, the habitats that we have preserved here in Sanibel. Uh, at, at the forum the other night, did somebody mention that uh, Ding Darling was uh, purchasing or getting ready to purchase property? What do you know about that? I don't know anything about that. Um, I, I, I'm certainly not privy to anything of that sort. Okay. Is there is there available is there land to purchase still left out there on Sanibel? I think there are some tracks, okay. two, three, four acres type of thing, maybe oh. even a little bit larger. I think there's one off of Bailey. But, um, yeah, there are some uh, tracks to purchase. But I don't, we're not going to, we're not going to, uh, this island's pretty much like 95% built out. Right. Okay. So there's not much development that, that can go on. Uh, the larger tracks, they're going to be obviously subject to the code, the building codes. Uh, if they are developed in any way. Um, but I would encourage, and, and I'm sure residents on the island are keen on preserving that and built, putting that into conservation land as well. So we're out of time, John. Uh, give everybody the elevator pitch, why they should vote for you. <laughs> Look right into the camera. Yeah, look right in the camera. Okay. Um, well, I care about Sanibel and I care about the residents of Sanibel. I care about what we have here and the, the Sanibel plan. Um, it is important that we preserve it. And it's going to take some energy. It's going to take a lot of time and commitment uh, to make it happen. I'm committed to making sure that we preserve Sanibel with all the different pressures we have, whether it be COVID or development or our water quality coming down from the Calusa Hatchie. Uh, I'm committed to make a difference in that area. I'm committed to make sure that the island and the city lives within its means and does not uh, overextend itself. Uh, and I want to make sure that I hear all the residents and how you feel about Sanibel and how to preserve what we have here. Well, t uh, John, thanks so much for coming on. We appreciate it. And good luck in the race. Thank you. All right. right. John Henshaw, thanks. everybody running for city council for uh, here on Sanibel and mm -hmm. Uh, we appreciate him coming on, and we have uh, Tim coming up next, so we're going to talk to the folks here at the Community House. Thanks so much, John, for coming in, and, and good luck uh, in the, I think it's March 2nd, right? March 2nd is, is the race. So, folks, before uh, Tim comes in, let me tell you real quick about Island IT Pros, all your technology needs for your home or business. They specialize in Internet, specialize in Internet, Wi-Fi, and business telephone solutions. Other services include website development, smart home, tech support, and point of sale. Local customer service in Sanibel, Fort Myers Beach, Fort Myers, Cape Coral, and Bonita Springs. And they really helped us with our new website, Fort Myers, uh, Fort Myers, uh, beachtalkradionews.com, which you can go to and sign up for our uh, twice a week headlines. Uh, they, they really uh, got us out of a jam there with our website, which wasn't functioning the way we wanted to. Um, but they did a great job. And that's Island IT Pros. I want to make sure I tell you the phone number. Otherwise, the ad is useless. 239-314-0230. Or, zero, yeah, 0230. 239-314-0230. And it's islandit.pro. Islandit.pro.
Thank you so much uh, for those guys being a sponsor. And right now uh, in the studio here at the Community House, I think this is the first time we've actually done a show from a completely empty room where there's no other people around. And it's it. I'm sure the sound quality is amazing of the it microphones. No, it doesn't bother me. You bother me sometimes well, when you get on my case I'm like that. You, this is it, this oh, it's a is lovely a house. Beautiful yeah. setting. Yeah. And I can't wait to have her come on and talk about it. But I was um, almost afraid to wash my hands in the bathroom. It was so bathroom. nice in the bathroom. I, I said, don't want to touch bath- anything. <laughs> That's what my first statement was. Wow, these bathrooms are amazing. Yeah. Well, Tim, uh, I am not going to uh, try and pronounce your last name again because I'm okay. not sure I was saying it right when we were promoting the Drobnik? show. Yeah, that's correct. See, it's oh. just like, yeah, yeah, just got a lack of some vowels in there, but it works. So we're going <laughs> to ask you to get nice and close to the mic. Those oh, are all cleaned. Yeah. Oh, all yeah. That's right, awesome. Yep. And so thanks for coming on. Hey, no worries. You got a radio voice there, I was there just going to oh, say the that. Deep, the deep, very yes. white voice. Yeah, right. <laughs> so tell us how the campaign is going for you. Um, you know, it's uh, it's been an interesting month. Um, I got into the race um, later than all the other candidates um, just by choice. I'd been uh, thinking about doing it for about a year. Uh, circles of people that I run with here on the island had been uh, kind of in my ear for about a but for about that same same time for about a year. So um, it's been going well. Um, I've learned a lot. Um, been able to talk to some other people, some other uh, residents that I hadn't otherwise been able to. Um, but so far, so good. And again, it's been a, an interesting road so far. Was there one issue that really prompted you to to consider it more seriously? Um, I, not particularly one issue, I guess maybe one issue. I don't know. I, I run, uh, I manage all the youth sports out here mm-hmm. and I have for about a decade now. Um, I've have two kids, two teenagers that are long since aged out of the, you know, age requirements for the sports out here. And, um, it's great. I love still doing it. It's a completely volunteer situation. Um, our organization is a nonprofit had to create a nonprofit in order to work with the city. Um, I see a lot of families, you know, from pre-K all the way up through eighth grade is what we cater to. Um, I've seen a lot of families come to the island thinking this is a great place, and it is a great place, and a lot of them stay. A few of them go, but they kind of just work in their own circles, let's say, and I guess they get that because there's kids, and that's what happens when you have kids. You socialize and everything with other this, kids right. at the same age. Um, I see a bit of a disconnect between those families and the communication with the city or just the city itself. That's no fault on the city. It's an equal situation, meaning that those families need to get involved if they want to get involved with the city. But I think that the city needs to be able to have some sort of conduit to be able to get them more involved as well. The family's more involved. Uh, to me, that biggest opportunity lies with the rec center. And that is, if you really think about all the different services and all the different places we have on the island, that's like the one or the main, I don't know, conduit, if you will. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids go there for the after school programs, whether it's sports, other programs, the community pool, et cetera. So I see that being an opportunity for, you know, uh, a better relationship between the city. So what's lacking there? What do you think the problem is? You know, it's been, uh, I've been on the island for over 20 years now. And so uh, I was there when the new, the rec center that you see today opened in 2007 and they have great programs. The people that have run that, uh, the rec center has been, have been great. Um, I've just seen it kind of dwindle in the last couple of years and especially this year because of COVID and financial constraints. I see all that. I just like to see a little bit more focus given to the rec center with regards to programs of all ages. It's not just the kids that go there. I mean, there's retirees, there's middle-aged people that go there for different type of programs, whether it be, you know, yoga, uh, aqua, um, aerobics, all those type of things that go on there. I just like to see a little bit more focus be given to expanding, um, I guess, whether it's the programs, the communications, et cetera, um, to make that rec center a little bit more, I don't know, more welcoming, I guess, mm-hmm. reaching out to the different people. We ran a youth uh, flag football league Ooh. in, in oh, Gateway. Awesome? And uh, well, the kids, <laughs> the kids are the greatest. It was yes. the parents that were the most here's, difficult to manage. Here's oh the thing. It's, it's a select few. Sure. You know, but That's those right. are the ones that stick out, and yep. those are the ones you you think about. You yep. you you forget all the wonderful. Absolutely. I'm sure you don't have any That's of those right. problems. That's right. Well, I doubt it. Well, you know, you think that, but you go back. Let's say, oh, six seven years ago. All right, and so at that point. Um, my kid, my, my youngest, she wasn't quite up in the middle school division, but it seems like the middle school division is where all the testosterone comes out from the dads, right? Really? Oh, yeah. We used and to so, see it in the five and six-year-olds. Oh, yeah. well, you see it there, but it builds, right? Oh, okay. So it builds. And so um, we had some, there was, I remember a couple seasons where they were made, 
we don't have a lot of kids out here, right? Sure. Then, right. Sure. We had four, four teams in that upper division and all four of those coaches were bound and determined to be the champion. And it's just, <laughs> it was interesting. It was definitely interesting. Uh, you know, we ended what, up now, which sport are you talking about? And flag football. Oh, okay. Same flag thing, football. Flag football. Oh. So yeah, absolutely. So, uh, yeah, there were some, some good battles. Let's call them on the field, a little bit of name calling all that. Oh, good that's stuff crazy. That goes along with it. Yeah. Out here in little old Sanibel. Right. So, um, well, you have your own police department out here. So if you ever needed to avail yourself. Well, it was interesting. After those couple of seasons, we ended up having, uh, you know. Did you have a presence? Yeah, there was a presence who would come it's and go. Good. We had like a, a yeah. marshal from the city, which was an employee from the rec center, is now required since then. And it's not like there's big old throw down brawls <laughs> yeah. or anything like that. No, but it's no. just, anyway, the ap the atmosphere out there has completely uh, 180 from that. It's it's um, it's the place to go on Friday nights, to be honest sure. with you. It's uh and the parents aren't really drinking water in those mugs they have next um, to yeah, them. Yeah, back in the day, you're right. There might have been a cooler in the car. You know <laughs> I, remember I, mean? saying one, so. I remember saying to one parent, dude, if your kid's going to the NFL, they wouldn't be playing flag football in uh, Gateway exactly. right now. Come on, back uh, no, off on this know, right here. So. But uh, no, it's been, it's been, uh, it's fun. It's, uh, you know, you figure about the small town and you get up there to the rec fields and all the kids are running all over the place. The parents realize that, hey, they're not going anywhere and everybody looks out for each other's kids. Right. It's sure. really a cool atmosphere. So besides your experience with youth sports, what, what is your background? What else? All right. So, um, uh, well, I'll go way back in the day. I've been in the island state for about 21 years uh, now. Um, my family that I married into has had an island presence since the early 80s. So they've been connected here to the island for quite a while. Um, I grew up in Florida on the east coast of Florida over in the Cocoa Beach area okay. and went to school up in North Carolina. I uh, went to Elon University. Not as big as this room, not real big. Um, it's bigger now than when I went there. Let's put it that way. Were the bathrooms yeah. as nice? When I looked in here, <laughs> no, they were not. <laughs> I wondered what, when I looked on your your website. I'm yep. like, where's that? University? Yeah, so uh, you know, let's call North Carolina the South, even though we're further south. The South yeah. is littered with a bunch of smaller liberal arts colleges, right? So there's you know, Catawba, Lenore, Ryan, Wofford, all these smaller schools up there. Um, when I was a freshman, I went to North Carolina State, big old school. It was great. But, you know, little Tim in a big school, it just didn't work out. Had a friend that went to Elon, which is about an hour and a half from Raleigh. And so I made the, uh, the transition over there. Um, Elon was great. Uh, I played four years of football there um, and uh, earned a scholarship. Um, it was great. I ended up doing, uh, I ended up with two undergrad degrees at Elon and then finished my master's there. So it was a great, it was probably the best college experience somebody could have. And, I, and it, it was just a really good, well-rounded experience. What did you get your degree in, remind people? That's great. So um, my uh, undergrad is in accounting and I've got another one in finance. And then my master's degree was just in general business administration. So, so what is your uh, impression on how this council is performing? Well, this council has been uh, fractured isn't the right word, but look at all the changes that's happened to this council in the last year, you know, with two two of the council members deciding to go run for higher office. Um, so they've had to work through a lot of changes internally, uh, along with all the changes that have happened externally, you know, with COVID and revenue issues and everything. So I think they've made it through very well, to be honest with you. Um, they've had to make some pretty difficult decisions that I don't think I would have liked to have been a part of. You know, obviously I would have, because there's going to be tough decisions to be made, but um, I give them kudos. You know, they've done a good job and, got to keep in mind this is a voluntary position so if somebody is yeah. you know these people all six of us and people that are already on council are doing it because they want to be part of the community they want to serve their community there was a bit of a, a controversy when jason went to run for state office and then didn't get appointed to his position again do you sure. think that was the right call to do yeah. it the way they did it How yeah come? I, I like jason a lot um i really do and I, I like what he has to say i know he has a lot of passion for the community and for the city and everything but with that being said he knew the rules that he was going to have to play by when he decided to go for higher office and so if he has a bad taste in his mouth for not automatically getting his seat back, I'm sorry, you know, but that's kind of how, how the rules were, were put and the, the council at that time decided to go ahead and put people, you know, appoint people in place that decided at, at the onset that they were not going to run for that office come, come March. So I think Jason's all right with it. Um, I haven't really talked to him about it, but seeing him through all these forums and everything, he doesn't seem to be, I don't know. I think he's all right with it. And if he's not, well, Yes, I'm sorry. I like Jason a lot, but that's just how it is. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, the uh, the COVID thing, there's a little COVID thing going around. It just really? seems to never stop going around. <laughs> I didn't uh, notice. Yeah. <laughs> what is your thought on how the council or the city has been communicating uh, the COVID thing to sure. the, you know, talk about the, they're really strict on the masks. Uh, talk about all that and how they're doing. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't like wearing this. 
you know, mm -hmm. people don't like being told what to do. I get all that. Um, but I think the bottom line is that we just need to, to mitigate as best as possible. I am no COVID expert. I'm not a doctor. None of us in council are, are experts in the field. Um, we're fortunate to have like Dr. Brown, Dr. Steve Brown, who's a, a, a Sanibel uh, resident. I'm in Kiwanis with him. He is a much higher authority on the subject than any of us that are going to be on council, right? So I think it's our job to do what's right for the community. Um, and if it's better to wear masks, even if it helps a little bit, then you go ahead and wear masks. You know, I don't particularly like it, but I also give a lot of credit to the citizens of Sanibel to do what's right for them. And if they're in a big crowd, then wear your mask or don't be in that crowd. Um, it's a lot of personal responsibility that has to go along with whatever the city council is going to say is it going to be the best of the community one of the things john said before when he was on was that the communication to the residents can be better is that sure i mean i think it could be but let's what would you communicate right now i mean seriously yeah. what would you communicate right now everybody knows what's going on with covid we have a mask mandate in place we don't have any vaccines on the island you know, everything is off island. So it's just a matter, I, you know, I don't know what we could be communicating better. Um, every uh, person, whether you're a, a resident or not, you can get uh, uh, regular uh, email updates from the city. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so yeah. I think the city is, you know, just short of being on the radio every week and saying, hey, this is what's going on with COVID. You know, what else? What else I don't know what else the city could well, do. Well, and who's listening to the radio? <laughs> yeah. So, no, well, the I room mean, is full. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, the I, I actually I get more emails from Sanibel than we do from Fort Myers Beach. And we've been okay. doing the show there for since 2018. Mm -hmm. So, sure. they, uh, they, they do get whatever the information is out, seems to get out. What is your thought on how the city manager is doing? I think city manager is doing a good job. I mean, she's, I wouldn't want that job. I heard John no. say the same thing. Yeah. I wouldn't want that job. And um, she's been doing it. Wow. 16 years now. Yeah. Wow. You know, 16 That's years. Amazing. Nobody lasts that long in a no. manager's position in, in no, a government. No, That's I, great. I agree. So um, I have uh, worked on, not to say worked with, but I have uh, had dealings with uh, with the city manager in past with relation to Sanibel Sports. And of course, Sanibel Sports, youth sports, whatever, that's for the good of the kids. So it's a pretty easy, non-confrontational situation, mm -hmm. right? Um, she is all over the city every day. You know, if you look at her, uh, social media posts, you know, she, she, she loves the city. So I think she's done a great job. I can't say anything bad about her at all. She takes a hard line on things, but I think in that position, you have to, you can't please everybody. And the, the way the signable government was set up was a strong manager and a weak mayor. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it is. I mean, I see the role of the city council is to, you know, work side by side of the people that we put in place to actually run the city, whether it's the finance department, plan, yeah. it, whatever. And so, it's, it's kind of like we're like a checks and balances situation. We got to make sure that this, whoever's running the city isn't yeah. running muck. Make sure the balance budget, all those type of things. And so we're kind of the voice of the of the residents. You mentioned that. the Kiwanis before. Is yep. it the Sanibel Kiwanis that doesn't allow women? Yes. What is the deal with that, man? I mean, how do you guys get away with that? Um, it's been like that back since the early seventies. I don't know what to tell you on that. We're I can't like, believe I, you picked that up. No, that was a good pickup. Yeah. You know, um, I am one of the younger people. In that that doesn't mean anything, Tim. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying, I, I, you know, I'm gonna, I shouldn't be right. Because that's the way it's always been. Right? Know, but that's right? true. That's right. the way it's always been. And now it's kind of evolved to uh, a thing of pride for some of the members that this is. Uh, wow. I know. I know. It's, 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 in, in this cancel, cancel culture world, it's amazing that something like that survives. It's going to be hard to cancel out 40 years of that mentality. And some of the, those guys in there are great. Don't get me wrong. I yeah. mean, they're kind of like the guys, guys. It's like a group of the guys, guys. And just that they're 60, you're not seven, getting, You're digging yourself in a worse hole. <laughs> no, I love them. You know what I mean? I love them. I guess if you want to get into a co-ed group, there's Rotary, you know, all these okay. other things to get involved in. So it's not like... Um, I don't know if you want to be part of Zanta. I can't. That's what an is all, that? That's an all female on uh, here group on the beach? out here on, oh. on the island. Is there so, a women's club down here that the guys can't go to? Yeah, Zanta. Uh, oh, is that what yeah, it's Zanta called? Yeah, Zanta is, okay. is an all female group. So I guess we could turn and talk sure. about Zanta. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. Good point. How dare they? Yeah, exactly. So do you have female speakers ever absolutely. come? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So it's and not like I, they're barred from the building. No, they're not barred. In fact, <laughs> there's uh, a woman outside. Lock yeah, the door. It's funny. The local <laughs> president for Kiwanis happens to be a female. And so when she comes in annually and speaks to us, it's Wait, quite what? It's funny. Fun. Yeah, there's like, uh, you know, there's different there's Kiwanis different, groups yeah. around the area. Right? Oh, not from Sanibel. No, not okay, from Sanibel, gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah. So she comes in and speaks with us. And it's she's got to be cracking jokes at the beginning about the fact that there's no women in the audience. Yeah, she's pretty hardcore. She puts up with this. Okay. I wonder how many women actually join Kiwanis in the other communities. Is there a lot? I yeah. don't we're getting know. off the subject yeah, here. Really. They're back on the point here. So Tim, when you go to the voting booth yep. 
on March 2nd. Who are the other two people that you really want to work with? Well, it's tough because, you know, this is a nonpartisan race, right? And I think all of us, and I'm not just trying to skirt the answer, but I do think all of us have unique qualifications or are going to do what's right for the city. And whether it's like Dr. Scott, who's looking at things from a scientific and a medical background, mm -hmm. or John, who has obviously a lot of experience with OSHA, to, you know, Kevin, who has experience doing it already. So, I don't know. I like what John has to say. Um, I do like what Kevin, uh, not Kevin, but uh, uh, Jason has had to say, but it's, you know, that's who you're going to vote for then? Is that what you're saying? Uh, don't let no, him back I'm not going to yeah. say that. I might just vote for myself. How about there, that? Well, that that's makes it that's a possible, too, right? So. You don't have to vote yeah, for yourself. Yeah, so I mean, but I, I think that everybody has, I think everybody has the best interest of Sanibel uh, on their, on their mind. And with, I think all of the, I don't know, the way the city's set up, I don't think certain anybody's political agenda can be swayed too far right or left. Well, just, just position. for clarification, all the other candidates we interviewed said they were voting for you. So. No, they didn't. No, none of them, <laughs> no, none of them didn't. answered, none, <laughs> uh, just to be clear, none of them answered the question. Yeah, of so. course, I'm sure they wouldn't. I mean, it's, uh, you know, this is a nonpartisan race and it's really supposed to be for the good of Sanibel and the good of the community. So when you have to go and make these decisions, you need to look at it yeah. from abroad right. to what's going to be the best for the community rather than my personal agenda if there is one so who do you think so should be the, can we ask who do you some, think should be the mayor i think it should be the mayor should be somebody that's already been on cancel okay so, so that look, would be uh, that would be either. richard johnson to be holly yeah. smith and if uh, jason gets in he would be in the and in, in the running as well because they have experience if i get in there i don't want to be mayor i'm not ready for that you know yeah. i'd be a junior member for a council so it shouldn't be somebody that hasn't been on cancel we're voting for holly yeah, I think we Holly, don't, we don't get a vote. Yeah. Just so it's no, only right. She's the vice mayor now, right? I mean, yeah, she's the vice, vice mayor now, and the mayor uh, McDenham, he's retiring and yeah. such. And so it, she seems to be the logical choice. She's put a lot of time and effort for this city, and so you know, if if I were on council and I were to vote, that's probably who I'd go for. So. Now, some of the issues that are facing Santa Oh, Bell. my goodness, the issues. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so speak to us about the about the big ones that you feel passionate about. Well, sure we've already being one of them. Yeah. You know, I, I obviously I, I concerned about water um, and we're kind of right at the mouth of the Caloosahatchee. Right. And so we're in the crosshairs of all the discharges and everything that happened. But Cape Coral, Fort Myers, Fort Myers Beach, everywhere here on the Southwest Coast is all affected by it. It's just that we're kind of in the forefront and we've taken that lead in fighting it, which is great. Uh, in fact, there's a Southwest Florida Regional Compact that you know all these regional, all these municipalities are now a part of, and we've kind of taken the lead in that. We're the first ones to sign on board with it. So I think that the whole water quality issue isn't just a Sanibel thing, it's a regional thing. And, you know, think about where we were with the water issue just five years ago, where we mm -hmm. are now. We're going in the right direction. And so we just need to keep going in that direction, making sound choices for us as a community and us as a region going forward. Do you think there's other things Sanibel can do to, to help you know, lo locally help with that effort of, of conservation and water quality and sure uh, there. I don't want to call them smaller things, but there's a bunch of small things that are going on and, you know, well, they all that, add up. Yeah, they know? all do add up. And, yeah. that, and that's just it. So you think about all the all the efforts that we've already put in place. Um, and it's just a matter of keeping going down that road. I know we keep talking about these 19 septic tanks on the island. It's 19 out of what, 5,000. So it's pretty small number, but yes, they need to be transitioned over and long before Captiva is even, you know, fully approved to go over to sewer. Um, but yeah, Captiva to me is more of the issue when it comes to the septic tank change changeover than the 19, but we need to get ours done first before. What do you mean by that? Like what is? Well, Captiva is all, is all septic. Oh, I see. Right. And so you think about all the discharges happening from that little island is impacting our water quality far more than the 19. Out okay. Here. But we don't need to do that until we get our backyard, you know, our, yeah. our, our stuff all yeah, ready so for us. Are, right. are they homes? Are they businesses or yeah, both? They're all homes. Okay. All what, why is it? Uh, it seems like it should is it is there a reason it takes a long time that, that you know of or is it in the process of being done it's i, I know it's, okay it, that's gotcha. part of that whole phase four septic thing or gotcha. phase four sewer expansion mm -hmm. that everybody's been talking about so it's part of that and it just happened to be in more remote areas ah. that weren't easily to easy to hook right up to this sewer system initially and so it's just a matter of kind of just finishing up how big is a septic tank i think it depends on the size of residents right yeah mm. i think I don't it know would much hold about septic yeah, I don't need only that. on the inside of the house. I, I know it's not good when it goes bad. 
Yes, correct. <laughs> so that's just it. You know, it was responsibility of the owners, right? They're supposed to get that cleaned out on a regular basis. And as John said, some people haven't done that. It's all good. Well, right. you know, we're as in it's sand. leaching into the yeah, yeah. But, okay, but it leaches in, right? We're sand. It's not like mm -hmm. we're a clay base. And so right. like, whatever leaches out goes away quickly. So, you so how know. do you solve the traffic problem? I know it's everybody brings up. I mean, it's, to me, I, it, I maybe because I don't come over here enough, but when yep. I see the traffic on the way to Fort Myers Beach when I leave, and then people say there's traffic here. It's funny to me. I, I don't know why, yeah. but I must well, be missing it. But it, there's no. really no traffic no, issue that I've seen think. yet. Yeah, maybe. It doesn't bother me. Okay. It's for what, three, four months out of the year. And the traffic patterns are, you know, until about 11 o'clock in the morning is when it's busy going on. And then from about three o'clock in the afternoon off is when it's busy going off. So if you're local and you live here, you realize that and you just work around that. Right. And so the traffic isn't going anywhere. It, I mean, unfortunately, I mean, I guess, unfortunately, it isn't. It's just it's it's part of life. You know how it is out on the beach. And I know that on the beach. And so if I'm going to go down there to SOBs for dinner one night, I know when to go, or, you know, what time of year to go, et cetera. So it's you just have to live with it. On that kind of subject, the parking thing uh, was uh, for non-residents yep. was more than doubled for yep. the B parking pass. Would sure. you have voted yes for that also? Yeah, I would have voted yes. For Why that so? As well. I think so. Just because we have such. Um, limited parking here on the island and not that we're not welcoming to people that don't live here but there's we're just limited in parking right and so the places that the a and b sticker can park um there may be four or five spots in any given location and so it just needed to be done you know what i mean it really needed to be done and so i don't know i don't have a, a an, any okay. really other than putting that i just think that we were shorting ourselves with regard mm -hmm. to the value of that of that b sticker right no, I was just going to say it is hard to find parking. You have to look. I know. It yeah. Is. You have to. Yeah, it is. Even living out here, right? So I've got an A sticker because I live on the island, whatever. And there's what, 13 or 14 places that we can park. But in season, you know, you go down on West Gulf, for example, there's seven different locations that you can park there. You better get there at a decent time or you're yeah. not right. going to be parking along there. So it's, it, it's, it just how it is. Is there one thing when you let's say you get elected? Uh, is there one you keep That's, dropping everything? I, all know. I, I there, need something else. Is there one issue that you're that you're like that we haven't talked about yet that you want to address and say, okay, I, this is really I need to work. I really want to work on this. Is something I really want to get fixed or changed or altered or? Yeah, I got you. So. Um, the Children's Education Center on the islands is the, I guess you want to call it a preschool, but it's actually a school here on the island. And it's been here for, what, 40 years, something like that. It was put together from donated houses that were, you know, moved over to its location and everything. So um, those buildings are a little bit older and they, you know, always need money for, you know, upkeep, et cetera. Uh, they had a change in the director over there about a year ago. Kira Cook's there now. She's doing a great job. And her whole platform or her whole teaching, teaching structure over there is, you know, teaching with one in nature, which goes right along with how Santa Bella is in terms of the, um, you know, coincide and coexist with nature. So um, it's not a situation where the city needs to take over that project, but I'd like to kind of, you know, point the spotlight a little bit more on that organization and realize that that is a, it's a landmark in this in this town. And I think if more people realize that, you know, they barely make it by year to year financially and the good that they do for all these young kids that kind of get them set, set out, I'd, I'd like to kind of keep on that trend. All right. Well, it's uh, it's we're out of time already. Wow, Tim. Already? I know a half an hour wow. goes by when, you you know, just shooting the breeze with friends. So wow. what's the uh, go ahead? Go, I something? just I wanted to give you an opportunity to get any other issues out yeah. and to tell wow. people how they can find you okay. and see your stance because yeah. the website is pretty good. Yeah, I know. Hey, I appreciate that. So yeah. um, I am, I know everybody says I'm not a politician, but I think if every, everybody's paying attention to the last, I'm sorry, to the last, uh, to the last month, hear me talk. I'm not, I'm a citizen, you know, out here. I kind of speak my mind. I'm not an expert on any one given topic, but I'm not supposed to be. I'm supposed to listen to what's going on in the community, be their voice, um, you know, whether it's, you know, in, in communicating with the city personnel and just do what's right for the community. Um, I'm educated. I have a hard time talking a lot about myself, but, you know, I am uh, I'm just a citizen that wants to do right for the community. And, and they get in touch with you. Oh, find yeah, you absolutely. How. Yeah. So um, on my website, um, I was fortunate enough to get the domain name SanibelCityCouncil.com. So no way. How did. did somebody not yeah. buy that? I yeah. don't know. I got that like a month ago. So go figure. So I've got that all uh, all up and running. So it has my platform on there and uh, phone number, all that type of stuff's on there. So they, people that can even email me through that. So. so when you get elected, if you get elected, you're clearly going to 
donate that site to the city, right? I mean, it's the only right if thing. If the city to do. wants it, I guess <laughs> so. Or maybe work? that'll just be my conduit <laughs> in communicating with all the citizens, right? I have SantabelleRadio.com. Is that oh, is that how it came up? Yeah, that's yeah, how yeah, it came so up. Santa, okay, so real quick, I know we're running out of time. So uh, Sanibel Radio, I picked that up about, oh, I don't know, that domain name about four years ago. And I just have a continuous stream of, of radio, of songs running on there, right? And that whole website, <laughs> site, if you go through it, it's nothing more than a, a chamber of commerce type of website for the city that I put together. I've got restaurants, businesses, vacation rentals on there, and it's all free. I don't charge a thing to anybody to be on that website. They can uh, do a quick little 10 second, hey, this is Jeff at the Sanibel Deli. You're listening to Sanibel Radio. I just throw it right on and it Wow, runs. that's crazy. Yeah, so it's just, it's, I, it's, it's not that expensive to run. And well, yeah, but you got to pay rights for the music, right? Where do you get the music yeah, from? Yeah, so you, it, it's a situation where you pay, you know, you pay for the songs and then the uh, platform that I work through, I can't even think about it now because I've been doing it for so long. They make sure that you've paid for those songs and therefore you have the right to replay them on this streaming service. And so it's not like I'm, you know, bootlegging some old right. no, no. Right. stuff and throwing it on. It's, no, that'd be a wrong a that, thing to do if you were running so, for yeah, council. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I would never do that. No. But it's a um, so the songs are paid for, and so they're uh, you know they're on there. How many playing. total songs is it? Like beach know, I think, music? I think uh, yeah, it's mostly there's a you know there's a lot of Buffett in there. Uh, it does have a little bit of a country edge to it, but there's some you know I update about once a month, so it's nothing hmm. too hard. But I think I've got about twelve hundred songs in it. I mean, it's, I'm so curious how how do you, how much is the music bill? Um, it's not that much. I think the the why can't I remember what it is? It's eighty bucks a month. Something wow. like that. And, but I have to pay for those songs. All right. So you go on Amazon, you go on 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 Apple. They're what a buck a song. So it's been a bit of an investment. Oh, right? so you buy them and then you, you pay, pay You have to buy them. You have to show gotcha. proof of ownership in there. So, you know, if you got a couple thousand dollars invested into this website and I do all the website creation, I do, you know, I do all the back end. So it's not like I have to hire somebody. Though I do have teenagers, which helps. Which uh, helps. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a pretty easy way for me to get information about the community out there. Obviously, hmm. I'm in real estate. And so um, it's it all comes together. People come there and if they want to yeah. work with me, great. But I don't do a lot of real estate promotion on that at all. Dude, you got to cut a promo and put it on there. I, the show. I thought you'd be interested <laughs> in that. I figured, we, so, I figured yeah. that was going to come up during this. So that, that's yeah. great. No, that's it's, awesome. It's, yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, well, I think what's interesting is people, that's where I went. And, and you've got all the issues listed yep. and sort of your response so Absolutely. people can get a feel for for what you stand for and what you're yeah. going to be providing for yeah, them. Yeah, absolutely. It's all about the community and that's what that website's about. And like Great. all my sports run through there, everything's right through that nice. one website. Well, good luck in the race and uh, we appreciate yeah. you coming on. Hey, 30 absolutely. minutes uninterrupted. Great. Great meeting you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Have all right, everybody. Uh, Tim Drobnik. You got it. Yes, yes. and the crowd for, goes wild. And the crowd goes wild and Tim is running for city council and we have uh, one more quick interview before uh, before we uh, say goodbye from uh, from the beautiful community house here. Uh, on Sanibel. And of course, we want to tell you about uh, Laura and our friends at Sanibel Carts. You get to cruise the islands in style. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to go on to Sanibel-Carts.com. They've got the cool, coolest looking little uh, golf carts. You got, what do you got? Two seaters and four seaters and Cadillac. Uh, say that again, dear, with your microphone on. Sorry, it's four and six seaters. Four they and six seaters. Gas and, they're and very, electric. And they're very, I don't want, I don't like to use the word cute. It, that, they're eye catching. Yeah, they're okay. That's better. Eye catching. And they uh, will deliver them to you all charged up or all gassed up. And they're street legal, not street illegal. They're solar paneled electric carts for all of your vacation and transportation needs. And for those of you that are complaining about the traffic on the beach, get a golf cart and cruise around in style. Everybody be wanting to take pictures with you. Oh, look, they have free delivery. Yeah, they deliver and they pick I know it you up. just said that. So you can call or email for their you. daily rates. It's Sanibel Carts. And Laura has been really huge help to us here on uh, on Sanibel. Uh getting everything uh, started and i hope tim's going to be helpful in our uh, launch of a radio show yeah, sanibelradio.com all righty that was well, uh, fun i warned you what did she warn you about i i warned her she that you warned. might throw some curveball questions at her yeah. i appreciate you inviting us to your little house yeah. so <laughs> teresa go ahead and introduce yourself and what your role here is at the sanibel okay. community house. i'm teresa riska hall i'm the executive director of uh the sanibel community association which is the um, business that runs the community house here on Sanibel. Okay. Uh, for uh, for us that are new to Sanibel-ish, what is the community house's function? Well, our um, mission is to enrich the community through educational, cultural, and 
other activities, social. So um, this house was actually built in 1927, the first part, the, the part we're sitting in today. The um, renovation we did in 2017, we took had to take the old floor out. It was coming apart. We used those to decorate the sides, the mantle behind us, and um, all over the house. We have... Um, Lots of different activities here. Normally, in a normal year, mm -hmm. um, we would have the Rotary's Arts and Crafts Festival this weekend, so you wouldn't have been able to do the show. Ah. But um, we have all types of different lions, all the regular clubs, Garden Club, the Zonta meet here, um, those that kinds of things. Too. That's the women's group that you guys are talking about earlier. You don't let so, the Kiwanis <laughs> meet here, do you? Um, if they want, they actually do a big spaghetti dinner, but they're not doing it this year because sure. of... Uh, all our challenges. So um, the community house is um, been renovated early. This was donated land by the, uh, the Nut Sisters and um, Curtis Perry walked the island because he thought they needed some kind of socialization. You know, later it was radio and then there's always been some kind of performance art things here. Mm -hmm. um, we have our shell festival coming up. It's like, I don't know, 90th something like that and that's that. going to be going on for well, sure we're going to do it slightly different okay so we have to take our uh, reservations online which is on our website www.sandvalcommunityhouse.com i dot net see look at me and um we will let people in we have the art league who stepped forward because the scientific and artistic cannot happen because all those come from as far as Japan. Oh, wow. Everywhere else. So those are not going to happen this year. We'll look forward to them for next year. But we have that coming up um, March 4th, 5th, and 6th. And uh, we're, we have a different idea in mind for the inside. It will still be lovely. It'll just be different. Um, it's been a really challenging year for the community house. We um, rely on the facility rentals when March, oh, yeah. for instance, walked off a significant portion of what we use to do business sure walked right off the books wow. and because we are a local organization and believe in the community we let all that money just walk away so that was a lot that was tough and it was tough so we are still trying to do what we can I, you know, you and I were talking before and you mentioned about the wood that's around the top and all the names that are up there and so those names got on there how those people all um provided a thousand dollars to help with the renovation here it ended up to be uh three three and a half million dollars we had budgeted maybe three million so we still have a little bit of a mortgage to pay there but we're working along on it so if people out there you know this is a beautiful it's a beautiful house. It's I was saying beautiful. before, I was afraid to wash my hands in the bathroom the because bathroom. I didn't want to touch anything. They're so nice. I don't know if you got to go. We went into the kind of like the third room in the back. There's a stage back there. I mean, you you guys are yes, set up. We, we really spent a lot of money. We have a nice grid system. We have the symphony, sometimes opera. So we do a really versatile amount of shows, meetings, and in season normally, all three rooms are booked nice. all three times of the day, morning, noon, and night. But we do take weddings, our uh, fall and into season. Wow. There are always little places we can place people to get in. So, yeah, it's rented, and those rental rates are online as well. And people, you want visitors, like, from out of town to come by and, and see what it is? And, and what do you want them to know about it? How, you know, uh, give, uh, give them the reason to come during w when they can and <laughs> when okay. you're open. Hours, yeah. So, um we basically have office hours of nine to three in season and nine to one off season. But of course the staff is here much longer. Um, we love to have people come in. We do all kinds of classes as well. So we have art, oil painting, you know, just like a normal community club. We have um, aerobics, um, physically distanced um, and masks are required, but we love to have people come in because there's just, a, a, there's still a lot of people that need to get out and need that for their mental health. So we ask them to mask up. We have sanitizer everywhere and come on out. How did you get involved in, in the community house and how long have you been here? Um, I got involved because a friend of mine sat on the board in 20, I guess it was 2010, 2011. And um, she wanted me to meet with her because I used to run a lot of recreation facilities on the island and the community house wasn't doing very well. Um, 
So she said, come meet me for a glass of wine. Who can turn that up? Right. And uh, <laughs> I went and sat down. And as she was talking, she said, I really think you should come and work at the community house and make it a vibrant living organization again. So, of course, I left Ronald McDonald House Charities and here I came. Wow. And so I've been wow. here for a long time through the most recent renovation. Right. So we did a 50s renovations and a 70s renovations. And then in 2017, we redid the entire house. We tried to take what we could back to the historical part. Those pictures are probably online as well. Like the whole middle part of the room was gone and they found a cistern filled with shells underneath it. Wow. wow. So cool. And you was, were saying during that renovation, how you got how many people to agree? And <laughs> well, the you guys mentioned the bathroom. Everybody loves the bathrooms. But we had seven women on a design committee. And um, we, I mean, we all agreed on most everything. And we like, what color white are we painting on them out? I said, right. it's white. They're like, no, there's like 500 or 900 kinds Shades of, white. of white. And you're like, okay. I said, paint the top three out on the door. Everybody come visit. And so we picked that. We painted, you know, the walls. Everybody asks about the walls. There's sea salt, by the way, in the lobby. But <laughs> so um, it was really a fun and challenging time, though, mm -hmm. I would say. Yeah. And then COVID hits. It's, everything seems like it's going along so well. And then, uh, you, you, the, you know, you're you're here to get people together and then you can't get people together. It's just crazy. It is challenging. But um, our shell crafters came back in um, after several months and with their masks and they are teaching classes on Mondays. Um, for people who want to learn, which we have them physically distanced. We only take a small amount, but we do have these um, activities happening here. The city had to shut down the senior center and furloughed that employee. So we have picked up those programs for the okay. seniors and um, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, how <laughs> it's many been one wild ride? Nice we'll way to put that. it. Nice how many rooms it. do you have? Cause you can, you can open it all up. You can, we have uh, three different rooms. If you close the acoustical panels in between, if you open it all the way up, I think the occupancy is over 800. Not that we would ever want that many totally in here, but right. we've had weddings in one room and then receptions in another. Mm -hmm. We have a whole, which I didn't show you all, commercial grade kitchen in there. We have a chef that is here teaching private lessons on cooking or wow. uh, small group lessons. So we just had Loretta Paganini down from Ohio and she taught demos. So there is still things happening. Do you find the community uh, steps up and helps you out uh, when you need it because of the COVID? I think most people have when they can. Yeah. You know, everybody's been hit. There's a lot mm -hmm. of small business on this island that is very responsive to the community house. So um, we try to be responsive back to them. So I think everybody has in their own way. But like Kiwanis, they were planning their spaghetti dinner. We worked through the COVID challenges and then the big international company said they wouldn't insure them uh, so you yeah. gotta, gotta you gotta it. just walk away from that you know and that was a lot of hours of those guys planning that to have it happen but well and i think like you mentioned you know i don't think people necessarily are thinking how hard uh, an institute a place like this has been hit because covid because that's where you get all your funding from so yeah. have you done any fundraisers to <laughs> Offset it's a, it. It's a continually, yeah, yeah, never stops. Ratcheting up of fundraisers all the time. We're doing several raffles. We have artwork that somebody donated to us in the lobby. We're selling that. It'll go online. It's continual because we did. We we were hit hard. Mm -hmm. I mean, each art festival, even the small ones, which are some of the ones we do, usually make us twenty, thirty thousand dollars, and we can't run those. Right. So, um. And then the ones that are bigger, they even bring in more for everybody. Right. You know, so it's a it's a real challenge. Well, we appreciate you opening up yes. special for us to come in and interview John and Tim. And uh, John's on your board, right? Tim. John is. John, oh, John is. is. Yeah. John is. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Sorry. And that's so right. people can go on Community <laughs> House. I don't want to scroll Sanibel up. Communityhouse.net. Dot net and check out everything on there and see the events that are coming up and how to socially distance and, and make sure that you're following the rules and anything yeah. else you want to get out about the about the house? Well, we're right next to the Island Cow, which yeah. I believe you've been at. Twice. Yes. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yes. yeah. Yeah. We uh, That's trying usually to move the around. one that pops up on Google before the community house. But, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's right a, on Periwinkle. 
It's a great organization. And if you can be a part of it, please step up and help us out. Thanks again for having us here. We appreciate you you opening on Sunday. And we appreciate you guys tuning in on Sunday. We'll be back again next Sunday with our final candidate. The doctor will be on and we'll be at the uh, Lighthouse Cafe for episode number five. Have a great Sunday, everybody. And we'll see you soon. Bye bye.